Okay, so I made a couple pairs of shorts and I'm excited to show them to you. Um, I'm gonna do kind of a two-part thing because I had to do some adjustments to the shorts, which I'm gonna show you the adjustments that I made. And I'm also going to tell you a little bit about the pattern. However, I just like went on because I wanted to be able to reference some of the instructions and I was gonna reference them off of the website. It was a free pattern by Mood Fabrics and it says bad gateway the pattern is like not there so it doesn't say not found like cannot be found like it's not that it's been deleted it's i don't know if they're working on their website i, I don't know we're gonna talk about it anyway and hopefully the pattern comes back maybe i'll email them and be like yo did you know your pattern's not working i don't know let's we'll, we'll talk about it anyway <laughs> All right, so I do want to talk about the pattern just quickly a little bit. I'm hoping that they get it back up and running. If they do, I will link it below because it is a free pattern from Mood. Um, and you know me, I love I love to share good free pattern, but I like to have tested all the patterns that I share. So if you are a newer sewer, um, you might find the instructions for this pattern a little bit frustrating. Um, it just is, it's, they're not bad, they just assume that you know a lot. And so if you've done French seams before, then you're gonna be fine. You know, it's uh, the basic steps are there. Um, if you have not done French seams, I did a video on them a while ago. I will link it below. I think in that video, I top stitched my French seam because I was doing it on a bralette. Um, so you would just skip that top stitching portion of, of it, but it explains how to do the French seam. One thing I particularly love about the French seams in these shorts is I was able to use two very different print fabrics in very different color palettes and I was able to batch sew two pairs and not worry about like having to switch out my threads and everything because you don't see them. Um, with the exception of the hem at the bottom um, and I chose to top stitch my pockets just because I don't want to have to iron my shorts so. That's the thing I did. But um, yeah, the, the French seams allow you to kind of, like, you don't really see your thread. Um, so yeah, batching was a lot easier. If you're not familiar with the term batching or you've never tried batching before, it is just a really efficient, quick way to sew a lot of the same thing, um, which is really handy when you're doing wardrobe staples like shorts or tank tops or anything like that. So I have a video on that as well. I will link below in case you're curious about that. There's so much traffic in front of my house today, you guys. I'm so sorry. It is so noisy. There are people building stuff in the neighborhood. It's just, it's it's a whole, it's summer. It's summer in my neighborhood, it's noisy. What can you do about it? Other than that, there was some weirdness with the waistband. I don't know how um, my waistband just wound up being quite a bit too small uh, when I did my practice garment. So you'll see there's kind of like a spliced chunk just so that I could do my fit um, but the waistband is supposed to be um, a two-part waistband uh, that goes from side to side because the shorts have a side zip closure um, I turned my waistband into a four-part waistband adding seam allowance here I did that for a couple reasons number one one of the fabrics I used once I pattern matched the print it only left me with chunks of fabric big enough to do a four part waistband. But even if that weren't the case, I still would have done um, a two part in the back at least because it gives you a lot more options for fit. This is a pattern that goes from size zero to size 30. So um, there's not a lot of accounting for different shapes. Um, and if you do just the two part waistband, you're really gonna be limiting yourself in terms of getting a good fit if you are on the curvier side. So that's something to keep in mind. I know I, you guys are probably sick of me ranting about people <laughs> sizing one size throughout the gamut and not accounting for shape. Um, but th this is, it's a free pattern. It is what it is. Um, and so it doesn't, it doesn't account for curve really much at all. Um, and so where I find I have a problem is when I take the measurements to get the size that I need from the pattern, I end up with something that's really boxy and actually too big for me. So uh, what I had to do, I had to do a couple of pattern adjustments. I had to do a little bit of a, a tummy adjustment, not to make it bigger for my tummy, but because if you do have a bit of a tummy, wait, I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna put on, hey, I'm gonna show you. <sighs> oh gosh, 
Okay, before I show you. Uh, so I did my practice garment in white broadcloth because that's what I had kicking around. Not really considering the fact that it's basically see-through. So if it's weird, I'm sorry, but I want to show you what happened with the fit. Okay, so side note, I am I am not that person who like tries to make every practice garment a wearable muslin. I only do one layer for the waistband. I don't do the French seams. Like I'm just trying to make sure it fits. So yeah, I'm, I'm, that's the person I am, okay? You can see on this side, I have uh, a section pinned out and that is because, okay, when I'm standing straight, they kind of look okay. But the second I move, like you can see all these wrinkles here, that's because I've got a bit of a tummy and so I don't fill out the shorts here. Like there's a lot of, of extra room in the shorts here. Um, and so to not have that, you know, if I'm moving around to create a whole bunch of wrinkles that way, I actually need to take some of that out. Um, I will put this in the top down camera to show you exactly what happened. Um, and, and how I dealt with it. Um, also, I did take in just the bottom a little bit. They just were a bit roomy here and I didn't really care for that. The other thing is, oh, I lost one of my pins. Um, I have a bit of a wedge here. <laughs> Not cool, so we're gonna fix that. And also I took it in at the back and on the waistband as well. So those were the issues that I had with my practice garment. Um, so I'm going to show you now how I solved those. All right, so the first thing I did after I put all my clips in is I took the measurement from where all of my crotch seams meet and I measured up to where that dart is going to start. And it, it's just going to be a dart on the pattern. It's not going to be a dart in the pants. Then I'm going to transfer that measurement onto my pattern. I'm also going to measure from the top end of that dart to the bottom of my shorts. If you're measuring from the bottom on one side, always measure from the bottom on the other side. Otherwise things can get a little wonky on you. Then I'm gonna transfer that measurement over onto um, my pattern. Now I am making that mark on the pocket facing, which is a separate pattern piece that I just have pinned on to my main front panel there. Um, so I am going to have to move that mark over onto my main panel of fabric. So that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm just going to unpin the pocket piece. I just had it pinned together for making my mock-ups so that I didn't have to bother actually putting the pockets in. Um, and then I'm going to draw a line between my two points that I've marked on my pattern. Now I'm going to slice in from the crotch towards the pocket and I'm going to stop a half an inch um, to the edge. And the reason I'm doing a half an inch is because that's what my seam allowance is. Then I'm gonna turn the pattern around, and of course I'm out of frame right now, but I'm cutting towards the seam allowance from the other side, giving myself a pivot to work with there. So there you can see I can pivot that piece, and I'm going to double check on my mock-up. I'm just going to measure how much I need to overlap that piece. And it was about a half an inch, so that is how much I overlapped the right hand side or the crotch side there of my um, pattern piece and then I just taped it down. Once I tape that down I'm going to grab my pocket piece again and I'm going to line that up underneath the front pattern piece because once that's all lined up there will be a small adjustment that I need to make at the top edge. I don't want my pocket to come up too high so you can see there's just like a teeny little bit on the top of that pocket piece that needs to be trimmed off. So I'm gonna take care of that. Now the next thing I have to take care of is the crotch area. Um, I am just going to even that out with a pair of scissors. I'm not going to worry about adding more fabric to level that out because we're trying to take fabric out. Um, and taking some out of the crotch. If I only had a little bit of fabric actually to take out, simply carving out the crotch a little bit would actually um, give a bit of an adjustment too. So I'm just going to cut that extra little piece out of the crotch area and that is the front pattern piece done. 
A little bit goes a long way with these adjustments. All right, now on to the back. There was this kind of weird thing in the pattern um, where the side lengths don't actually measure up. They're a little bit of a different shape, which is fine, um, but they're the same height. So actually when you curve the fabric to meet, one is longer. In the instructions, it says you could um, curve up into the waistband, which would actually require a different shape of waistband, or you can just cut the excess off altogether, which is what I decided to do. So I'm gonna trace the smaller of the pattern pieces onto the larger one, just to make them match. As I get to the bottom where I actually wanted to reduce both pattern pieces, I'm just gonna grab a ruler and I'm gonna blend that out um, and just take about half an inch off the outside edge of that pant leg. Um, just, yeah, they were just a little bit too big. Now, because I've made an adjustment to both pattern pieces by the time I get to the bottom of the leg, I'm just pinning my pieces together to hold them and then I will cut the whole thing. For some reason, the footage of me adjusting the back pattern piece, um, I don't know what happened, so I'm just gonna walk you through it. So this section of the crotch, because I had that wedgie, um, I just carved out, and it, at its thickest point, it was about a half an inch. Remember, again, a little bit goes a long way. Um, from that point up to the waistband, I also needed to take it in there, so I took that in about a half an inch as well. Um, and I just cut that right out of the pattern piece. Now, if you were taking quite a bit out of the crotch and you didn't have like a, a enough room in the leg, like if it was gonna make it tight, then you would wanna go ahead and add that onto the other side. What, however much you took out of the crotch, add it onto the side. I didn't need to do that though. All right, these are the fabrics I'm gonna use. You may recognize them. This floral one um, I got quite a long time ago in uh, a thrift store and I remember showing it to you guys. They had sewn it into a big long tube. I'm not sure what they were gonna do with it, but I'm gonna use that. I think it should be nice and light and pretty. And this other one I did show you guys in the show us your stash video. This is the one that my sister had brought back from Tanzania for me. So um, I'm really excited to use both of them. I don't sew with a lot of print, so this is a big deal for me. And I just went ahead and I followed the instructions now that my pattern is all adjusted and I made two pairs of shorts. You can see they're fairly high waisted, um, which is kind of nice. Although I do wear my shirts tucked over, I do love the pockets, but yeah, they turned out quite nice. A little side zip there. And again, I went and cut my head off in the shot. I mean, one of these days I'll learn, guys, I promise. All right, so there we go. Two pairs of shorts, batch super quick, ready for the heat, which I really need, because even though it was <laughs> nice and cold and rainy when I started building this, the sun is now out, so I'm gonna need them. Again, I really hope they put that link back, but regardless, I hope seeing how I did those fit adjustments is really helpful for you. And that is all I have for you this week. So if you haven't already, please subscribe below and I will see you next time.